Hello, Android developers. Today, I have a guest with me on this video who had joined to share his experience with uh, an interesting tool called Maestro, which is recently used a lot for UI testing. And first of all, I'd like him to introduce himself and then we can jump right in. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you. So my name is Ajanebek. I'm pleased to be here and get to interview about this uh, Maestro UI test from up. OK. Uh, What's your job right now? What are you doing? What's your position? Which company you're working on? Yeah, so right now I'm uh, working at uh, Trade Public. Um, who doesn't know about this company? It's a nail broker. So basically, we are letting the users to buy and sell the stocks, uh, ETF. Um, recently, we have launched the bonds, which is very interesting financial product. So we are working in the mainly in the Europe. So main market is uh, of course in here in the Germany. And we are Berlin-based company. Um, yeah, so been working as an Android engineer uh, here uh, in a trade public for one year, uh, since last year, um, as a senior engineer. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I heard a fun fact about you. Is it true that you grew up in Japan? Yeah, that's right. So I've been living in Japan from, from fifth year till 12th. So when my parents were studying there uh, for uh, masters and PhD, and yeah, that was an interesting time for me as well. Like because I had to move from the Kazakhstan when I was still very young, young, and uh, when I was a fifth years old, and then yeah, I was uh, literally starting from the zero to learn the Japanese at the kindergarten. Then yeah, I went to the elementary school as a regular Japanese uh, boy in Japan uh, in a city called Sapporo. Um, yeah, cool, cool. Uh... Okay, we, we can delve into the topic, uh, the stage is yours. Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, today I wanted to share this uh, my research, uh, the how I try to integrate the Maestro into our uh, project, especially in the Android. And this is like uh, my findings and how it was uh, very easy to integrate the, this uh, tool and play around and writing the regression testing. So yeah. Um, so once again, about me, um, if you ever wants to like uh, follow me, I'm available in the Twitter, formerly known as uh, yeah, Twitter, and now it's X. Um, and also I'm active in the Mastodon. Um, so if you are interested about uh, our company, and uh, here's a engineering blog where there's a uh, interesting articles about how we do, uh, interesting, uh, open source project that we have published and so on. Yeah. And Let's go. So here our agenda for this uh, um, interview. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna be talking about those uh, um, points, so how we ended up using the Maestro, but um, yeah, not very uh, broadly. But uh, I'm using it for locally, uh, for personal usage and uh, integration of a Maestro. How to do that in the that's for example like in Android. And then writing the test cases, um, simple test case, maybe like uh, some flow that you have in your application. Then we're going to be talking about Maestro Studio, which is kind of IDE for uh, to like yeah, easily write um, your regression test, like uh, using their tool provided from the Maestro. And a little bit about the Maestro Cloud. Um, and finally, learnings. And if there is going to be time, like <laughs> we can also have a Q&A with you. Um, yeah, so let's go. So how we ended up uh, to using the Maestro? Um, so we have to like uh, understand first that uh, we have a regression testing um, each time when whenever we need to release the new build into Google Play. Um, it takes a lot of time because uh, those tests uh, are mostly like a doing manually. Um, and manually, like uh, if we launch the application, is first we install, of course, launch the application, then try to check like that the, all the critical parts of the application is working, like authentication. Then for in our case, we are nail broker, so we have to check that the stock is uh, able to buy and sell. And there are many, many, many test cases. And each time, like uh, whenever we need to release, in our case, it's a uh, bi-weekly. And it means like, yeah, we, each time we have to like test all those uh, test cases scenario, and it takes a lot of time. So we have over hundred tests uh, to verify before we deploy new version, 
and it's uh, really a lot. And as we have uh, recently launched a new version of the application, it takes also like a time to check old version and uh, like a next um, new design. So it's an extra effort. Of course, we might be like a uh, soon like a move to the completely to the new design. But yeah, it's of course uh, always with the case with A/B testing. Um, that's why I was uh, proposed like the solution to use the Maestro. Um, I heard this a tool uh, from my colleagues, and also during the Droidcon building, I was uh, also presenting there to talk about the design system. Um, and yeah, so I thought that like why not try to use it and uh, try to optimize our manual process that we have currently. And this is was like yeah first. Uh, research uh, done by me, like to like take uh, take a look and is it possible to integrate into our project and so on. Yeah. Um, then yeah, it's just uh, try to run the Maestro, like installing it and then trying to write the simple uh, regression test case. For example, like uh, here you can see um, simple process to check our onboarding, and for example, we need to put the phone number. Then you can use the random number, for example, or asserting. And there are many, many, many uh, things that you can do with the Maestro. And this was uh, just uh, uh, from the scratch when I started to look at the Maestro's documentation. And this how I ended up like yeah, writing some simple file. Yeah. Um, so we have talked about like, <laughs> I talk about a bit uh, how, why we have decided to like uh, take a look at the Maestro. So then, yeah, let's uh, check how to integrate it. It's very simple uh, in general. So if you are using the Mac OS, then it's very simple. Like uh, you just uh, copy these uh, commands into your terminal, then it's going to be downloading all the necessary uh, execution files and then like uh, installs. And also you're going to have all the um, access to like uh, run it on the shell. Um, yeah. And that's all. Like with this simple command, you can have uh, all the environment ready. But unfortunately, on Windows, as you said, it's a uh, bit uh, uh, hard to set it up, right? Yeah, I had a fun time installing on Windows because uh, it doesn't run directly on Windows machine. You have to install Linux on top and then somehow uh, link the ADB on your machine, which is connected to physical device to the ADB on that Linux machine and install ADB and Android platform and everything. It took me a while, but at the end it worked. But yeah, that's that's the that's Windows thing. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, unfortunately there might be this kind of uh, problems, but I guess it's a kind of a bit, uh, problem with Windows itself, like uh, the not very ideal the open tool, but in my opinion, sorry. But yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying that it's a, uh, not you should, yeah, if you want to, like, you can also run it on the Windows as well. No fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, after installing it, then uh, you can run the test that you have uh, written, like uh, Maestro is using the YAML uh, extension files, so you can write in those uh, steps uh, and save it as a YAML file. And then you have to specify the path to your uh, file that you have saved. And then you can just run those tests of course, before running it, you have to set up or your emulator or physical device. But um, unfortunately, there is some issue regarding the connected device through the USB, at least on the Mac. Um, so I had to connect it through the Wi-Fi, and it's working. Uh, but yeah, mm, most probably it's best to like uh, check it on the emulator. It's a uh, yeah best case scenario. Also, Maestro provides very simple command to uh, boot it up simple emulator using uh, start uh, emulator, I think it was called. Then it's going to set up all the emulator setup that you need um, with, the, um, with the, all the right configuration for the Maestro. Um, yeah, but uh, there was extra step uh, in our case uh, for Terry Public. Um, we are using the two-factor um, authentication, so we have to check the OTP one-time password uh, whenever we need to authenticate. So here in this example, I tried to run the, our application and get into the um, authentication flow. And when this happens, we are sending S SMS in order to get the OTP code. Um, and to check, like a, 
as we are using the emulator, it, we don't have like a SIM card attached to it. And so it's a bit problematic. And depending on your solution at your company, it might be have a various solution. Um, Maestro recommends to you like a provide from backend engineers spe special endpoint where you can get the last uh, sent OTP. That's an ideal solution, um, which there might be like, yeah, so various solutions uh, are available for your case. Um, so we, I had to like also figure out this case with together our team and um, yeah, we had to successfully manage to set up the authentication flow. So that was the only the um, pain point that I faced during the uh, setting up the Maestro. So yeah, after having the resolving the problem with the OTP, we have uh, finally able to just uh, check all the real uh, flows inside our application. Yeah. Um, but also like, uh, for iOS engineers there, um, you might also want to run it because Maestro provides this uh, ability. So it's not only about Android itself, but also iOS. Um, but also for iOS, it seems like there need to be extra have steps like installing this uh, tool from the Facebook now known as a meta, um, some ITB tool and, uh, using this, uh, they are able to connect to the simulator and run the Maestro. Um, yeah, so this means that the, by writing one simple Maestro file for checking your test, um, you can also run it on iOS as well. So that's very um, nice because uh, now you have a, like a, one tool to run on each platforms. In our case, we are supporting Android and iOS. So in the future, we can um, export like port to uh, tests as well, like running on iOS. Yeah. Hoping that we could do like it, but uh, it needs also like yeah this kind of uh, extra setup, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. Like uh, you have a, a Maestro integrated to your project. Depending on your project, you kind of have a extra setup that you need. Um, but in most cases, like a very simple applications, maybe you don't have to have a authentication. But yeah never know like i there are so many possibility of the applications in the market so uh yeah but basically um, you are kind of like a trying to check with the you don't have to install anything inside your project into the weird gradle dependency stuff or like uh, this kind of plugin that you have to add no there's nothing like that you just work with the um application that you have uh, installed in your emulator or simulator then you can just run the maestro. That's it. So it's very simple. It's nice. Um, so yeah, let's go to the about the next point. So as I we have uh, shown already the some simple commands that are available on Maestro. Um, here are a list of them. Okay, that uh, mostly is used uh, that I have used during writing the maestro. So like a uh, first one launching the application. Um you can launch the application by specifying the application ID um, and you can clear the state or not clear, it's optional, um, but it's recommended to clear the state because uh, ideally UI test should be, uh, each UI test should be isolated between each other. So that's kind of a um, must thing to do. Like, so each time you launch the application, it's best to clear the state. It's, it's then clear cache yeah. and deleting all the storage of the app. Yeah, okay. exactly. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's imagine like if you launch the one test and like a next one, then if it's already been authenticated, it's uh, conflicting the state and maybe there was some cache uh, stored before yeah, the launch correct. that you said. So yeah, so you are, the good point about the UI testing is that the, each test should be already cleared. So a next command, it's a tap on, like uh, you can tap on anything that visible on the your device. Um, yeah, you can specify text. With text could be also regex, so you can specify like a, some kind of a matching uh, that you need. So it's not should be like also like a, ideally matching all the text. Um, so yeah, of course, regex is not very simple for some of like yeah <laughs> many of us, but uh, <laughs> there's many tools that you can like write the regex uh, very easily and yeah. Um, and also there are many, many commands available like input text, run flow, text screenshot, assert visible. So I really like that the Maestro team have tried to make the commands very simple and it's very identically 
clear to understand what this command is for. Um, but maybe take a look at the run flow. So for example, if you need to run the one test flow that you have already written and you want to reduce the duplication, then you can specify run flow command and path to the other flow file. Then you can reuse the existing files that you have already written for the maestro. Um, yeah, it, there are many, many cases that you might need to reuse. For example, in our case, we are using a lot the logging flow because for many other many product flow that we have, we have to first authenticate. Then once we get to the application of the home screen, then we can check many other product that we are uh, have to check. So yeah, there might be this kind of use case for using run flow command. So it's it's like calling another method in your code. So you just mm -hmm. call login, it goes to other other YAML file, it executes everything and gets back to the current flow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then yeah, once you read the documentation of the maestro, yeah, you can like uh, try to um, reproduce the necessary step for your regression testing. Um, so let's take a look at the login flow that we have. And yeah, we're going to go through the each of them like a step by step. Mm -hmm. So this is like overview of the login flow that we have. Um, we have to first enter the pin, I know, first uh, tap on the login, then you get to the phone number input screen. We have after inputting the phone number, we have to yeah, enter your pin code. We receive the new OTP code, which is like a, here, it's going to be skipped because we have a solution to automatically get the OTP. And once we get back the OTP, we have to enter the pin code once again. That's the, our login flow. Um, not that very uh, complex, but yeah, there's uh, some, um, may, might be some extra uh, steps uh, that we have to resolve, but um, yeah. Um, so take a look, let's take a look at this file. Um, first, in order to run, launch the, to specify for the maestro, what, which application you want to check is that you have to specify the app ID. Um, yeah, in our case, we have a, this uh, application ID specified and we are using the debug application um, for running the regression testing. That's why we put the suffix of the debug. Um, yeah, you can also like uh, use the real production application, of course. Um, it might be like a, depending on your uh, yeah, solution in your setup. Yeah, you can also try to like run it regression testing on the release builds. That's of course possible. Um, then after specifying so, the FID, yeah. Uh, should the app be in debug mode or or any app which is running on the device can be can be clicked and tapped and I don't know read the screen. Yeah, good question. So um, I tried to yeah, explain that it's also possible in the release application. So basically, mm -hmm. you don't have to build a specific build a uh, debug application. So mm -hmm. it's not you can also uh, run the maestro on non debuggable uh, mm -hmm. applications. So if you got like a Facebook application on your emulator, and uh, you can also try to run the regression testing, uh, mm -hmm. checking the Facebook's flow. That's also possible. Any application that's available that you install into the emulator, you are able to. Um, write regret tests uh, using the maestro. So it's kind of like a black box. You um, take a application file as like a black box. And over that, you try to like, yeah, check how test is going to be going through. So it's a very, simply put, it's an end-to-end -end testing. So yeah. Interesting, thanks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so after like specifying the application ID, yeah, you can launch the application. So Maestro knows that from this app, app ID, which application we have to launch here in this example. So as I said before, you can specify the clean state. So you clear all the cache stored files that are available in the, for the application. Um, so I would recommend to like always clean the state and that's like a yeah, recommended way for writing the UI test in general. So then, yeah, you can use the tap on command uh, which where you specify the text, for example, here we specify that the, there is some CTA button login and Maestro can tap on it and we, it's going to be expecting to do something. And, uh, and then like a, 
once we tap on, we have to like move to the next screen, right? Like uh, where we are inputting phone number. So nice thing about Maestro that, that they have a very intelligent way, way of uh, waiting for the screen to uh, load. So of course they are using under the hood like a, some trade sleep and they are waiting for the screen to be ready and checking that the next command is out, gonna be able to run as well. Um, so I bet they are like uh, using some uh, some nice way to like yeah, thread sleep and waiting for animation to finish as well. Um, yeah, but in our case, we don't have to like worry about that because yeah, it's uh, taken care of by the maestro. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask: Should we disable animation and things like that? But uh, yeah, it works out of the box. That that's very cool. That's very easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So we don't have to like uh, if you are writing uh, espresso, we are very typically. Have to like a uh, either provide the um how to call it the id link or mm -hmm. or in most cases the uh, everybody says that yeah you have to just uh, turn off the animation in the settings that's like yeah, yeah. must like a uh, basic uh, setup for running the test ui test but in case of the maestro you don't have to do that mm -hmm. um so that's also like yeah i think nice way you don't have to bother all the configuration for the device and you are checking like in as real application use it by the users. So yeah. Cool. Um and yeah, let's take a look at the, this the next example of the command input text. So here you can also provide the uh variables like a uh, basically it's understand that the if you provide some environmental value, then we can access this uh, field, uh, variable in this uh, command, for example. So I had, for example, in our case, we want to pass many kind of phone number um, to run the regression test. That's why here we provide through the environment, the phone number. And yeah, um, we can provide, of course, the default value for the phone number. And then uh, Maestro understand that uh, when we running the command for input text, then it's automatically detecting the text field, which is, I believe that first focusable element in the screen and just like yeah, put types of uh, text that we are provided. Yeah, then we can tap on like the next button that we have on that screen and yeah, we are finished the screen for the phone number input. Um, yeah, and one more bit of information like about the environment. Yeah, so you can support supply the environment variable to test when you run the maestro command as well. And also, uh, there was a command run flow. So when you want to run the flow of the other file, you can also provide the environment value by yeah, passing the uh, overriding basically the environmental variable. That's also possible. And yeah, in this case, this login file uh, is basically reused in many many other flows that we have in our applications. So it's like passing in some input for for your next test. So. Mm -hmm. uh, is it also possible to have, for example, a loop of, uh, in your case, you said phone number. Let's say you want to test if 10 different phone number works fine. Is it possible to have kind of like a loop and calling it multiple times with different input? Have you tried that? I didn't try it, but uh, I have seen the command from the, in, on the documentation of the Maestro. There is a command mm -hmm. called the file. Um, also, there is a way to make a loop so you are provide you can run the commands multiple times like uh, how many times you want to like execute it so it's also possible to do that way um yeah it depends on your use case like uh, what you are trying to achieve uh, by doing that so yeah um so basically if there is a, some request for some supporting features maestro team is also like a very open about the future requests so you can mm -hmm. uh, open the new issue in their GitHub repository and try to like uh, write down what you are want to want to achieve and they maybe provide like an existing solution that you can achieve that so yeah they're very open about helping to find like a yeah, solution for, and they got also Slack channel it might be like a very best way to reach to them and ask about like a maybe community of the Maestro engineers could have also like a help to yeah, find the right way to yeah, find the comments yeah yeah, I, I've met them, I think it was uh, two years ago at DroidCon. It was before they introduced Maestro uh, Mobile.dev. 
the the developers and the company and the, they were really open for sharing and uh they they did a great job with this too so yeah yeah oh, I agree. sorry for interruption no no good um yeah so tap on accepts like many many other id uh type of the inputs so you can provide the id uh, of the view that you have on the for example for android you can specify the id of the view and you can access them um but um i would say that it's not very preferred option uh, when you want to uh, support the accessibility um the reason being is that the user who has like a turn on the accessibility features on their device who wouldn't be very easily access to the uh, views which is like a kind of preventing the our application be more accessibility uh, first application so here in this example you have this uh, numpad cell which i try to like access with id but in ideal case you should it should try to like make it accessible through the text and that way you would help the many many users that have a disabilities yeah and um you can also like assert visible that the some either title is visible and yeah you want to check that some uh, very crucial text is uh, visible for the user and you ensure that the uh, user have seen this uh, information um yeah it's also accept the same parameter as a tap on um so you can specify the text id and not id but uh, some sort of element access uh, as a uh, written in the tap on documentation um yeah and we have like yeah uh this a uh, one more example like a run flow so it's we have already explained the the how does it work but uh, you can also specify the uh here you can see the example of like how you could reuse this login flow if needed to so let's say example like we have some other regression testing and we want to run this login then you just have to provide the relative path to this file and you'll be able to run those commands uh in other test cases as well so in the end um we had i managed to try to like a uh, Write that regression testing to check that the, some instrument like a uh, Apple uh, who's gonna be able to uh, buy it. For example, like a hundred euro of this stock of the like a uh, Apple. Um, <laughs> yeah. So after writing this uh, login flow here, you see that it's uh, going through the authentication flow, and we have finished the login. Then we get to the home screen tapping on the invest uh, button we might be having like some many many screens um ah yeah so in this case uh uh we try to uh, check that the the new product that we have launched uh, it's about the bond so for bond um we want to i wanted to have a, a check that the, it's also accessible and uh, making ensure that the, we can reach to this instrument screen and all the necessary information is uh, available on that uh, like for the user um so it was very simple to write those comments uh, using the maestro like it just and it's executes very fast um so yeah it was uh, really nice to like see that the after writing one this uh, maestro fly we can rerun it all the time and ensure that the whenever we need to deploy the new version application bond product that we have been launching is uh, available for the customer as uh, should be so yeah mm -hmm. by the way watch, watching your demo makes me wonder what about permissions because sometimes there's a permission dialogue should we do something beforehand or we just as a normal mm -hmm. use case just tap on the hello button yeah great question so yeah it's you have like a very not, you notice that, that there was no permission um so in this case uh, maestro is taking care of the permission flow uh, so by default it's accepting all the permissions mm -hmm. um, but you can configure what permission you want to uh, turn off like uh, by default like so that you wouldn't maybe you add the some flow that you have uh, you want to specifically uh, check that the permission is uh, shown for the user like uh, some flow you want to check to get the grant access for the camera and you would say that the, yeah I would turn on the off the camera permission by default and then check that the, this permission screen is popped up 
yeah, um, you can check the documentation for my store regarding the permissions. Um, it's very simple to configure. Um, yeah, and in our case, we didn't have to like. Uh, we have a very um, this kind of case in the onboarding. So one of the steps we have to check the documents of the user, um, and to do that, like uh, we can check that the permission for the accessing the parameter was uh, requested, and this kind of case is also possible to check on Maestro. Cool, cool. Yeah, so um, this uh, file, you, know, you can see that it's uh, very large. Um, so basically that was like what I have writing for the bonds, for example. And uh, obviously it's uh, quite a very easy to, of course, like uh, write it by yourself, but uh, um, sometimes you might feel like it's a bit complex. So you might get uh, this uh, famous picture, like uh, drawing the all. Um, because uh, at the first glance, you might see that it's very simple. Like uh, there was a simple command, tap on, assert, launch, up, and so on. But uh, to do all these uh, checks for the checking the, your application flow, it might take a lot of time. Um, but as you get used to it, like uh, you are simply able to draw a real picture of the all, for example. But it takes a time, of course. To help this kind of uh, situation, like, uh, to simplify, um, there's a very nice tool from the Maestro uh, called the Maestro Studio, as name is like almost like an Android Studio. So it's an ID tool uh, to create the Maestro test cases. And uh, let's take a look at how does it work. It. So you just have to run the Maestro Studio in your command line, and it's going to set it up all the necessary environment to run the this studio. And then it's going to set it up the local host uh, in your local machine. And you are able to, um, you can check from the browser to access your emulator and run it and basically helps you to find the right elements. Uh, words is, uh, to describe it like a by the word, it's very hard. So it's, I think it's the best way to demonstrate this is a live demo. Yeah. So after running the Maestro Studio command in your terminal, then it should set it up all the uh, local host uh, configuration. It sets up all the necessary settings, and it should open the, your default browser. In my case, it was a Safari, so I had to check switch back to the Chrome because, uh, yeah, on Safari it seems like there is a bit uh, uh, layout inspection issues. So yeah, Chrome is uh, working stably. Um, so yeah, uh, let's imagine we have uh, like this uh, application that's uh, already started up. Um, and now, like uh, once uh, you launch the application, it should be in the this kind of uh, first state, right? And we're gonna be using the now in Android um, project from provided from the Google, um, which is an uh, application to check the all the latest news update from the Googles regarding the what's the latest um, new things uh, on the Android, and um, we're gonna check if it's very like some of the flows uh, of this application. Let's imagine, I don't know, um, maybe save it articles might be like a really interesting. Um, yeah, so let's try to uh, reproduce these flows. Um, so let's uh, say we want to uh, check the latest news of the Jetpack Compose. Uh, then you can click, for example, uh, on the comp like uh, on the view, and it shows up this uh, pop-up dialog where it's uh, providing like uh, available options that you can uh, run comments. So we want to tap on. So and also there's other comments that you can also check. Like uh, you might be want to some other conditions. Um, yeah. So in our case, we just want to have a tap on the text, and you can see that the, here's a there is an index one, which is a kind of because uh, composed text might be available on other parts of the screen. So if there is a multiple um, text like that uh, duplicating, then you might need to specify this index. Um, yeah. Um, of course, um, in order to like make the accessibility a bit more better, you might think about like which is the best way to um, access this uh, view. In our case, in this case, I would say that the maybe accessing the top on uh, here, not only compose, but the um, add compose 
uh, interest, like, I don't know, the interest, um, at Campos articles. Might, that might be like yeah, some options. Um, so after running this, my so, so gonna... That, so that dialogue help us to create a record in that YAML file. That's, that's how I see it. So you can decide not yet, if you not want yet. to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, not yet, but it's uh, just a recommending like what you can do. And it tries mm -hmm. to run this command uh, on the Maestro Studio. Um, we're going to get to the, like, uh, how it's going to be in the end, like, uh, to the YAML file. But basically, mm -hmm. you can copy these uh, files, like, uh, just copy or export. Uh, then you uh -huh. will be able okay. to, yeah, save it as a YAML file um, with the select commas that you have uh, specified in here. Yeah. In the end, it will be a record on that file. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So basically, you're just trying to, like, uh, reproduce the, all the necessary steps. And mm -hmm. after you have done, writing the uh, test flow, then you want to like yeah, store it as a yeah reusable uh, file. Um, yeah, so just first step, like, yeah, we are click on tap on compose. And as the next step, we might be done with the adding the interested topics. So here in this now in Android application, they are showing down button after clicking on the topic of interest. So then um, we have to uh, bookmark the article that we are interested to write. And we here, there seems to be like a button. So they have a, made the accessibility for this icon as a bookmark. So we can try to access this uh, bookmark. Um, yeah, and seems like uh, this uh, icon has changed. We can check that the, after changing the state is uh, unbookmarked. Same way we can yeah, assert that uh, after checking, clicking on tapping. So best way to say it's like a tap on. So uh, after tapping on, you might want to like uh, check that the uh, 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 icon has changed to the unbookmark. Yeah, so let's assert that. And what we can do now after adding bookmark, I would expect that uh, all the bookmarked articles are in this page, which is uh, called the saved. We can try to access this uh, saved. And here we have like uh, this uh, title saved screen. Yeah, let's just assert that uh, this screen is visible. And yeah, we can try to access the this article. Um, so here, my story is uh, suggesting that you might be able to like uh, tap on this element, which is suggesting like uh, the pointer. Uh, it's also like a one way to um, like access the element, but uh, it, I would say it's not very ideal because the uh, positions of the pointers might be like uh, all the time change and you never know, like it's not the very best way to access. And um, ideally, I think this, um, how they call the card of the article, have like a, some accessibility tag, um, like a article, the new Google Pixel Watch is here. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, there's many ways to improve the accessibility. So I think Maestro is a very nice way to like, yeah, check is your application is uh, accessible uh, enough, like, and so on. Um, yeah, but uh, here in this example, as, yeah, we might be maybe access through the title of this article, which is also like a not um, ideal, I think, because article might be get the new article available every day. And then in this case, it might be not the, the new Google Pixel Watch is here article, for example. So yeah. what about the container? Uh, can you can we check container, for example, to see if the container is here? But... Container for this one? Like yeah, the... yeah, yeah, for example. So, so. Yeah, we tried to access it. Oh, um, I nothing. OK. Yeah. No, I so... get it. Mm -hmm. So I think in this case, uh, we could try to like uh, add the semantics uh, accessibility for the uh, this uh, card. Um, yeah, you can find a very nice uh, article about uh, how to improve the accessibility from the Google. Um, and one of the way to make this accessibility improvement, I think it's a, is make a merge of the um, content inside this card. Of course, I think not all the text should be merged together, um, but yeah. So it takes a time to just so yeah improve how to best way to like make it yeah. 
we need a kind of handle or something that is unique and is not changing during running the test to make sure everything is is working. So for example, as you said, the title is going to change, so it's not a good handle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now, now I exactly. totally understand why you are pointing about the accessibility because then the content, you, you can you can use that accessibility text as a handle. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think in this case, we can use that uh, on, boom, on bookmark button, maybe. Mm, if we unbook a sync, yeah, Just well, assert. we can assert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I just wanted to check, like, if you can tap on this uh, article, like, then I think I would expect that it should be opening some web view to uh -huh, read uh -huh. this article. Um, but I think, not sure, like, uh, how we're going to do it best way. But so for sake of, like, just uh, checking, we can yeah, try to tap on this uh, title. Um, yeah, so it's opening some web view. Yeah, right. And it takes us some time to open the web view page. Um, but we can assert once again that here the title is visible. It's also able to check the web view because it's basically able to check all the things that it's uh, uh, available on the screen. Um, yeah. And yeah, for example, if you want to close the um, screen, then there's uh, many ways to access this uh, close button. Um, pointer, mm -hmm. which, which is like a uh, worst way, I would say. <laughs> and yeah, and also they have like close tab accessibility semantics uh -huh. or ID. Um, so I said ID is also not the very recommended way, I think, because um, let's imagine if you want to check this is the same application, but on the iOS application, then in this case, iOS doesn't have like a kind of same ID reference, right? Because here it exactly says that it's a Chrome, um, I think it's a Chrome, uh, how's called the uh, top web view, right? Uh, integration. And in this case, best way is going to be maybe closed up. But it's also might be interesting that they on iOS, they might have a different name depending on the how they are um, handling this uh, closed up, for example. But can we press yeah. back button, for example? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a command called the back also like which can run um yeah but i again, won't run I it right on now because on yeah. ios on ios they won't have back that's, that's yeah fine. that's true as well um i think they on the documentation there was a uh, note regarding the back if i'm not mistaken but uh, it should be also able to run the back um on ios um if we try to like run it, but need to check that. So I won't say any further but because I'm not no sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So we have like a finally met just some simple flow that uh, checks some random article. Um, yeah. Of course, there are many, many uh, possibility that you can check. Like, uh, for example, there's a extra command here. Um, if you want to like a scroll, there's a, of course, like a scroll command. So it's going to be the scroll for you. And also, they are also like some AI support, which is like a nowadays like a very um, trending um, solutions for everybody. If you want to have like a tryout this uh, AI part, then you have to first log in on the Maestro. Um, then you'll be able to run it. But basically, if let's say after enabling the AI, then you would you want to like a check that uh, I want to tap on. Uh, title that begins with Matt's skills compose, for example. Then this could be like a one potential example of the prompt for the AI. And I would expect that they to try to give me the uh, tap on uh, command with the regex, which starts with the Matt skills compose, for example, like, yeah. But the uh, sake of the simplicity, we won't uh, check it right now. <laughs> yeah. So that's like uh, about the uh, Maestro Studio. Yeah, they got uh, improving a lot like uh, uh, every day. So it's nice to see that the Maestro team is uh, working on like uh, adding like uh, some very nice features into the studios, making um, writing the regression test files like uh, very easily. Um, so yes, we can select all these files. And for example, I don't need to 
check the this for you. Then, for example, let's say here, um, your application ID. Yeah, and yeah, that's it. So we have a file that's uh, gonna stored for you, like a flow YAML file, for example, and yeah, you will be able to rerun this uh, file on your uh, just not a like a regularly on your you know, re release train, for example, and yeah, we could try to run this uh, flow file. Um, so after successfully running as uh, configuring your uh, flow file that you have stored, um, you can modify it, like uh, some additional checks that you need to do, like or in our case, we forgot about adding the launch up to clear the state, for example, and we have a uh, modified the uh, application ID that uh, was a uh, uh, exactly one that for the now in Android. And then, yeah, we can reuse this uh, command by running this command, specify the path to your, your file that you have uh, saved, for example, and we can run this. Then after yeah, entering, it should set it up. And yeah, in the terminal, it's a uh, step-by-step, -step, like uh, trying to accomplish these uh, steps that we have uh, uh, provided, then yeah, you can check that it's uh, checking marking all the steps and current phase. And yeah, and here I would expect that it's opening up the web view. Parallelly, uh, there's an emulator that's uh, running those comments. So um, so in this hour's case, we just like show that the, what's uh, uh, on terminal you are seeing. So, but yeah, in the same time, it's uh, running those comments and so I think that's a very um, crucial, like a strength of the Maestro is that, the, as you have said, that the, it lets you everybody to write a simple uh, file that uh, proceeding all the steps that needed to check what you need for your application. So even if you don't know about the specific about the Android or either iOS platforms, you are very easily can write those uh, comments uh, thanks to the help with the studio. Um, yeah, and the documentation is very nice, simple enough like, to understand. So if you need the extra help, then you can take a look and try to yeah see what are their available commands. Um, so yeah, let's imagine like in our case, uh, we could have like a, um, anybody from our company like a, to try to write this uh, uh, test and we can reuse it on iOS as well and Android at the same, both same time. So yeah, that's exactly, I think, and what let's could not be like forget for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget that this this is an open source tool. So you can go contribute, open an issue, someone would fix it. That that's that's very cool part of this this whole tool. Yeah, exactly. So it's open source, and uh, it's very appreciating the teams working on the Maestro that they are uh, made to this kind of very cool tools, and as like a same time like a Maestro Studio. And also they got the Maestro Cloud, um, which is a platform that they providing to in order to like uh, run those tests on the cloud, and you don't have to run it on your local machine or have a set it up uh, your test environment. So let's imagine in your company you don't have a self-hosted uh, machines that you can run the CI that you're gonna be running some like regularly scheduled way. In our case, we need to have a bi-weekly check for this uh, regression test that we have uh, written. Um, but we could use the Maestro Cloud to run those tests and they all have uh, like a very nice uh, integration to the GitHub actions. Um, and in this case, like they are able to like uh, put this kind of extra step into your pull request. If you need to run the regression testing all the time when you open the pull request, for example, it's also possible, like, uh, but in our case, we just need to check it bi-weekly um, when we are starting the release train. Yeah, and yeah, you can check the this GitHub actions, um, and also like a, uh, on this uh, mobile dev inc, they got the separate open source project for the Maestro Core product. And yeah, I tried to run this uh, test that I have. Um, written for our third public application. And as a one of the steps, like I tried to 
run one of the release train that we had. And yeah, as you can see, it was a partially success and half of them failed. So the solution that I have uh, uh, provided for OTP, the one-time password, uh, didn't mm -hmm. work well. So that was the main issue why we have uh, so many failed tests. Um, so I believe once we resolve that problem, then we could have a uh, yeah stably working the uh, regression testing, like basically rep replacing our manual process that we require to do every time we start a release. Um, so yeah. Uh, hoping that we could work on the improving this part uh, soon. And um, so. Uh, I have a question. Uh, that, that Maestro Cloud is is kind of a device farm. So if you, if you have your own emulator or a powerful CI setup, which can execute or bring on an emulator, then you, need, you don't need that. So you can run, run your test or whatever you have on, on that emulator, on your CI. And yeah, uh, is, is this correct? Yeah, exactly. So basically, you don't have to use the Meister Cloud because uh, it's just a, one of the solutions that you can use as a testing farm. Um, and uh, they are just charging like a 10 cent uh, for each run of the test flow. Um, yeah, for the startup, like it's for this beginning, they are giving the 10 US dollars of the credit for each month to experiment the usage. Which is very nice, um, and so this way you could like just uh, try out would uh, the solution from the Meister Cloud gonna work for you, like uh, to just uh, run the regression testing. But as we said, like uh, um, we don't have to like uh, rely on the Meister Cloud entirely. It's uh, uh, you are able to like uh, basically if you are able to install the Maestro in this machine, uh, running this uh, uh, bash script that we have seen in the beginning of the presentation. Then you are free to go, like just uh, running whenever, wherever you are want to run the regression testing, for example. Uh, so basically, um, if you have like your own solution for UI testing, then you can yeah first uh, uh, install the Maestro, then boot the emulator, for example, and like provide the those Maestro file files to run, and that's mm -hmm, all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you should push those YAML file with your repo and just and during checkout just just pull them down mm -hmm. and then then start working on them. Uh, what I yeah. totally uh, what I understood is that you don't need to add any plugin or dependency to anything. So it it use it it takes your current app with current setup without any extra thing, and just mm -hmm. use that black box as you said, and start running stuff on it. Yeah, so exactly. And um, in our case, like uh, I proposed like uh, to the team that uh, let's try out the Maestro. And I said that we don't have to even like uh, change our Gradle configuration to support this. So with the other solution, you might need to, like uh, some extra dependencies. But in this case, yeah, it's uh, completely unnecessary. And but you might have like uh, some extra, um, like I don't know, like a solution that you need to bypass some one of the steps in your authentication, for example. Um, that's like, yeah, one of the maybe Kava, uh, maybe pain point or like a step that you might require to do. But in most cases, you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, exactly like as a black box. So yeah, in this case, uh, in the Maestro Cloud, it's uh, also recording all the flows that you have uh, run. Um, in this example, it's was there uh, running the one of the check for the for example like the release train and um, it's also able to like a uh, check uh, all the recordings and in this uh, command here on the right side you can see that the, what is the current step that it's trying to do and basically this way you can see that the, maybe you have a failed step somewhere and you can go to that step and. It's going to be show in this recording exact point that the uh, test has failed. Um, so it's a, they are improving a lot of things. Like a, this is a nice way to debug and reproduce the problem that you have faced during the running the UI test. Um, and also you can download the screenshots um, that you have uh, provided for the command. Take a screen, screenshot and uh, you can download it. And maybe you want to 
make a reporting of the um, regression testing that uh, all the flows that was uh, necessary to ensure that the release is uh, uh, successful, then down download the record uh, screenshots and make, a, I don't know, like a, some reporting for the release train that, uh, yeah, we are successfully have a green light to release this uh, new version of the application. Yeah, I would say that's uh, like an ideal setup uh, that could be like yeah, used for the Maestro, for example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, it's not very expensive, uh, I would say. Um, so every run of the Maestro flow, it just costs a ten cent of the USD, um, and that's it. Like so, you just have to like uh, estimate how many flows you have to run. Um, and each flow could be consisted of like a very large uh, commands. It depends. Um, I don't. I'm not sure what is the limitation of the each uh, flow file. Um, I bet it's like some minutes of the limitation. Like uh, I think last time it was a four minutes, or it might be increased right now, like a till uh, unlimited even, mm -hmm. because they had the on Maestro problem with the Android recordings. Uh, so it was mm -hmm. maximally able to record only four minutes. And now it's uh, possible to record more than that, thanks to the research team from the Maestro trying to uh, have a solution to record the Android device um, unlimited. Yeah, and in our case, like uh, I had tried to calculate some um, uh, one way, like uh, for example, we want to run the regression test each uh, release train. We are doing it bi-weekly, so each month we have a uh, two times. Of the, we have to run it like a two times a month, and also maybe you want to have it a daily uh, builds like a for as a nightly, and in this case you're gonna yeah sum it up like a two plus thirty, we gonna have approximately hundred test cases for example for the release. Um, it might be like a growth, uh, depending on like a how large your project is gonna be growing, adding the new features that are also crucial to check. So in this kind of setup, you would expect that the U, it kind of costs about 320 USD dollars, which is very cheap, I would say, like for the organization and company that's uh, mid size. Um, yeah. But the bit limitation is, I would say, that uh, they are providing only one type of the device. So it's able to configure on the API version of the OS. So not very bit uh, um, configurables, but I would say that as a default setup, I think that's uh, good enough. If you have a other solution for your test farm, then yeah, you're just uh, good to go. Like uh, using your solution, that's fine as well. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, UI testing is is time consuming and expensive. So yeah, using this uh, price calculation tool they provided, you can calculate, but. You don't want to run test and at every pull pull request because it's gonna take a while uh, to run that test and and it's going to slow down the developers. But as you said, at once every release, I think it makes sense to have this. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, finally learnings. Um, so we have uh, already take a look at the, one of the example that uh, we don't we shouldn't rely on the ID and instead we should try to access by text. The reason being that uh, this way we can run the Maestro test uh, on both platforms, um, like Android and iOS, um, because uh, some specific platforms might have uh, like a different IDs, and we cannot always as uh, assert that the iOS and Android team is uh, ensuring that the ID for some view is the uh, same, and both platforms are treating the IDs a bit differently. Um, so that's a bit hard. So in another case, is that uh, very important that uh, this by relying, accessing it by text, we are improving the uh, our application by finding issues with accessibilities and by trying to like make the uh, for the person like that's not freely able to use our application, they can yeah we can try to reproduce the steps that which could potentially help a lot for them like to find the many many problematic places which is might be not accessible or not very user-friendly like uh, for them to uh, understand what this uh, text is like saying on the screen, for example. So yeah, and during this uh, phase of like writing the regression testing, I found many, many 
problems uh, in our design system that uh, we have and uh, try to create issue tickets. And I was like, yeah, uh, trying to improve uh, one by one um, by this way. We can like, yeah, ensure that the application is like uh, improving day by day, like uh, and um, having running writing the regression testing, make sure that uh, you find this kind of problems uh, very easily using the Maestro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, and last uh, learning point that uh, it's that uh, it's very easy to write uh, thanks to the Maestro Studio, for example, um, because it doesn't require lots of a setup and you just have to um, install the Maestro into your local machine. And you don't have to know about the specific knowledge about each platforms uh, because mm -hmm. it's just the same command uh, executable on the, every platform that they support. So, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I've already asked all my questions, but for the viewers, if you have any question, you can leave a comment and we try to reach to that comment and answer, uh, hopefully. Yeah. So, Hope you like the Maestro, so you would, uh, yeah, please try out. I think it's very easy to check the your application and um, and it's possible to like, yeah, have a very easy way to write your end-to-end -end testing reports and um, yeah, hope to see lots of like improvements from the Maestro team and thank mm -hmm. for them, like uh, having this kind of tool. It's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Th that was very uh, enlightening uh, topic. And in general, everyone, every Android developer, every mobile developer knows that UI test is, is cumbersome. And we had Espresso here that was supposed to help, but it, it caused other issues. But looks like Maestro is helping a lot of those issues. And now we have a working tool that we can share with our QA. Um, I'm so happy that I invited you to join me and thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Do you have anything else you want to add at the end? Yeah, it was a pleasure to get being invited. Um, it's the first time trying to like yeah, have a, this kind of a live interview. So um, yeah, I think that uh, I hope that the, this presentation met uh, lots of uh, interesting know-hows like for many as an engineer, so I hope that uh, you would try want to try out the uh, Maestro. It's a very nice tool, so yeah, definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, so also at Republic we are hiring a lot. Um, so if you are interested in joining um, our company, then yeah, you can find the job uh, page in our Republic website. So please look it out, check it out, and yeah, um, and it's. Also, like here is uh, my social media links. So if you need any, um, yeah, help like regarding the maestro, like uh, the, yeah, please reach me out. I would try to also like help. And yeah, if you also more interested in the maestro, then there is a community of the maestro in the Slack. Uh, so you can find this a Slack channel uh, through the maestro's uh, main website. Uh, they have like a link to the Slack. And I think it's the best way to reach to the master team to ask like a questions that you're interested and to request for the new feature or trying to find the solution that you are facing. So I think you may try to like yeah, reach them there. And also if uh, you see that the, you don't want to like also join the Slack and to ask there, there's also like GitHub repository on and they are letting to also opening the issues that you're facing and feature requests uh, some but yeah, please try to describe more detailed way like at what you're trying to achieve and help them as well to help you like try to so that uh, mutually helping each other. So that's it. So also please check it out our uh, Twitter public engineering blog. And yeah, thank you for the, watching this uh, episode of, together with the Max End. Uh, I will add all the links to the video description, so you mm -hmm. just have to go there and tap on them. And yeah, if you if you like such content and you're Android developers or you are going to start doing Android development, so uh, subscribe to this channel. I will share more topics like this. See you soon. Ciao.